Up until this year, I've only had coffee occasionally, most of the time in small doses and highly diluted like in a latte. But when quarantine broke me down into a bean dependent of the second kind, I was blessed to experience the perspective of a 30 year old man finally trying to make great coffee and cursed to experience the perspective of someone trying to learn something that a hundred million interconnected addicts with opinions already argue about all the time. I realize that there aren't that many people out there looking to start making coffee as a total beginner, but I want to make the resource that I wish that I had. Advanced brewers, you may want to skip this one. First, you have to understand that this is a game of diminishing returns. The first couple of pointers will make a huge difference, and as you keep increasing the amount of effort and money that you put into it, the resulting improvements will be relatively minuscule. So, what matters? Number one on your list has got to be use good water. Brewed coffee is almost 100% water, so using yucky water will yield yucky results. This is subjective, so you'll need to use whatever water you find most delicious, whether that means tap, filtered, distilled, or diamond infused. The next upgrade you can make is to use freshly roasted beans, and since virtually everyone drinks coffee, virtually everyone lives next to a local roaster. Start with light roasts if you like Dunkin', or dark roasts if you prefer Starbucks, and buy your coffee anywhere that discloses the roasting date. If there's no date, I'm not convinced that they'd be too proud of the awful truth. If you buy freshly roasted coffee, even if it's pre-ground, it'll probably taste better than whole beans that were roasted a year ago. Speaking of which, the first big leap that you can take is to start using whole beans. While the previous tips had a negligible associated cost, this one is the first to hurt the wallet since you'll have to buy a grinder to break those big brown beans into grainy grounds. People like to wax poetic about burr grinders over blade grinders, but Cooks Illustrated already suggested in a double blind test that most people can't even tell the difference. I bought this entry-level burr grinder thinking it would be a hit, but it's extremely loud, plasticky, and the grounds are noticeably inconsistent. The moral of the story is that a burr alone does not guarantee results worth the price. Even though freshly roasted coffee will make a bigger difference, pairing that up with a fresh grind is always preferred when possible. Think about how different fresh ground pepper tastes compared to McCormick dust. One more benefit from grinding whole beans yourself is that you can choose the coarseness of the grind depending on the brewing method you prefer. Which leads into the final note. I think that the last meaningful step that you can take before some seriously diminished returns is to select a favorite brewing method or two. You could go for a French press if you don't mind working to avoid sediment, pour over if you want to practice a manual technique every day, or cold brew if you wanted ready-made coffee served over ice. This choice is impossible for me to make on your behalf. Say you value strength over volume, you might go with a mocha pot to use over a stove. Then again, you might use an AeroPress if you make coffee out in the woods while camping. This is your opportunity to go on Reddit and obsess over each option, and I think that's why it caps off this list of low effort, high reward considerations. I personally went for a Bonavita Connoisseur. It checks all the boxes that coffee nerds care about like temperature, flow rate, and water ratios, but I only have to press one button. This video was not made to suggest that any improvements beyond what I just outlined constitute snobbery or pedantry, but at least make sure that you're making these small improvements before lusting after $100 grinders and $1,000 pieces of machinery. These small steps will get you most of the way to coffee that can only benefit from largely imperceptible improvements in taste. I do, however, realize that this is not always a matter of flavor. After all my research, YouTube naturally served me with an overwhelming amount of coffee content, and I see now how easy it is to get lost in the aspirational nature of coffee culture, which can influence otherwise reasonable people into performing full-on Roman Catholic masses every morning just to prepare a highly commoditized beverage. I'm of the mind that this sacred coffee ritual people like to obsess over is better spent on morning rituals that improve your well-being like walks, journaling, meditation, or just about anything else, but that's probably already been made evident by my artless choice in brewing method. If all of this was overly elementary for you and you really do want to pursue world-class competition grade coffee, I suggest that you look to James Hoffman, a coffee expert of the highest degree who runs a roastery, wins global awards, and maintains a respectable code of ethics. I first found out about him in 2018, not via an instructional coffee video, but rather from a meditation on how settling for so-so results from time to time can keep your expectations in check. I think if there was ever a year to battle expectations, this is probably it.